Hello everyone, and welcome to Talking Into Tribbles. No, I can't find a place to put this. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to Stitch Trek. Have you ever gone on vacation only to come home and find that your rabbit has chewed holes in your decorative Star Trek pillows? Do you think he did it because he missed me? Doubt it. Hmm. <sighs> I'm not mad. He's too cute to be mad at. But welcome to today's project. This episode is a costume I worked on for the Star Trek Cruise 5. It is a 1920s version of Emperor Giorgio's wardrobe, I suppose. I was able to be creative. I absolutely love the way it turned out. And that's what you're going to see today, how I put it together. This is a piece where I didn't have to go and hunt for fabric. I was able to find elements and just kind of combine them through sewing, of course. Yeah, they're sewing. Um, but I will show you how. It was a lot of fun. Also, though, I would like to do a quick shout out. I was suffering a bout of indecisiveness on the ship and could not really choose which t-shirts I wanted to buy in the Star Trek store. And I missed the opportunity to buy a few of Kenneth Mitchell's t-shirts that I really liked. But I discovered that if you go to punkarmy.net you can find his merchandise there, and uh, they have a whole bunch of stuff that was available on the ship and some new things that I didn't see there. And all of the proceeds go to um, finding a cure for ALS. So I think it's uh, a really good way to support a really awesome cause and also to support something created by one of our own Star Trek actors that is so inspiring. So I just wanted to share that in case anybody were looking for a way to help out and do a little good. But without further ado, let's just get into this episode of Stitch Trek and enjoy a little more footage from the cruise. So this is Emperor Giorgio, and this is the style I'm going to try to mimic only in 1920s fashion. I'm going to go for this lovely makeup, and I think this hair. I found this top on Amazon by just searching sequins on black, and I'm just going to cut the bottom half off. Oh, magic. I'm going to cut around the neckline. Ta-da. And you can see it's of this beautiful sheer see-through texture. to you real quick because I guess this is also part of the point of this show um, is that you can see that my fabric is running this way this is the band that's gonna go down my front from my shoulder but I'm stitching this way even though I'm going this way I'm going against the direction opposite the direction is not opposite yeah um, crossed to the direction. And that is because this cotton fabric behind here is stretchy. And because this is net, it is also stretchy because there's a lot of space between the threads. One thing I don't want to do is snap threads. So instead of just stitching, you know, in the direction of this attachment, I'm here. I'll draw it for you. What happens when you're stitching straight? Per se, this is the stitch. Your thread, if you were to take the fabric away, is going in a straight line which means if your fabric stretches that way, your thread snaps. So what I'm doing is stitching this way. What I've done, if you take the fabric away, is created a coil. It's essentially spring-shaped. So if your fabric stretches, this way, this just stretches out. It doesn't snap. 
So that's the entire point of going sideways all the way down. So if you're doing fabric that doesn't stretch, feel free to do this. It's faster. If you're doing fabric that will stretch by hand, definitely do this. This is a zigzag stitch. This is what your sewing machine tries to do. And this is a straight stitch. Only this is how you do it by hand. So I've set it out so you can see it a little better. I'm putting straps that are going to go over my shoulders. The rest is going to be see-through and I'll have a gold tube top underneath. This is a uh, not typical fashion, but you can definitely find it in uh, fashion plates where you can see through the top outer layer. I'm going to do that zigzag stitch that I just showed you to connect the two because the strap underneath is soft cotton and the fabric on the top is a stretchable netting. Yeah. After it's put together, the top part looks like this. Then I just add the skirt, super easy, just sewing around the bottom of the top and the top of the bottom. The skirt's a little long, so I'm going to chop it off at about knee height and then add the lower half of the original shirt's sheer section to the bottom. People tend to think of 1920s dresses as being shorter than usual, but evening wear was still at least down to just about your ankle. Even at their shortest, most dresses weren't above the knee. They were for maybe a short time in Paris, but that was about it before they plummeted toward the ground again in the 1930s. This is it with the gold tube top underneath. That was a super easy purchase. Just Googled for a gold tube top. I'm going to make a very quick coat. This is the easiest thing in the world. It's called a cocoon coat. It was a fashionable 1920s style and you really just took the top of a rectangle and rolled it over and sewed along the seam. It's pretty easy to find patterns and tutorials online on how to do this. It maybe took 10 minutes to make this. I did add a tassel off of the back just for a little something. And here we are in beautiful NASA, I think. Oh my goodness, this was stunning. We had a balcony on this cruise and it was so worth it. We'd sit out here and have our morning mojitos and watch the boats go by. It's amazingly beautiful. You could still see some storm damage though. But, you know, these islands are still recovering from a few years ago, and our tourist dollars do help their economy. We found hammocks on the ship. Utter paradise. It was just beautiful. What a great place to hang out. This was our evening show. And I have put on the dress to get ready for the party of the night. Time to do my hair. I've never really done this before, so this was a first time, and all I really did was leave it long on the sides so it covered my ears and rolled into a bun in the back, and then pin back everything that hung willy-nilly all over the place. It was very rare in 1920s women's hairstyles to see your ears. I wish I had gotten a better angle, but it was so hard to find a place to put my phone in this little bathroom. Here I'm putting shadow all the way up to my eyebrows and I'm going to draw the lines kind of down for this doe-eyed effect. I'm not going to do fake lashes, they weren't very common at the time. And I'm going to use blues and grays, which was I think on the palette in the late 20s. There were very many color options then. I've also used concealer to make my lips smaller. It was considered beautiful in the 20s if your lips were smaller than your eyes. My lips are a little large, but it's the best I can do. I still have some wild hairs to fix, so I'm going to tuck those away, but I think the makeup turned out pretty well. I used a concealer on my eyebrow to make them thinner and then drew the outer edge downward slightly to give them that languid 20s look. Oh, the bun struggle. Yes, the bun struggle. You see, it's still uneven. Oh, constant adjustment. Pretty good, though. Slowly but surely getting there. So many bobby pins. We both used so many bobby pins, and I'm not a bobby pin person. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Oh, heck yes. So this is the hair. I've got my jewelry on. I got my pin and my waist ribbon for the drop waist effect. And the shoes. Oh, this headpiece is made of zip ties. I didn't make it myself. I had to buy it last minute because I'd run out of time, but they are available on Etsy and fabulous. This sunburst effect crown was actually in existence in the 1920s. This was the 1920s party, loud and dancing and absolutely wonderful. Trekkies are the best, God, great at parties. dancing with his boyfriend. This coat turned out so good. After I put this fur trim on it, oh, stellar, and the earrings, I felt this costume. I was into this costume, absolutely loved it. I also had black stick-on nail stickers, which were okay. I don't really recommend them. They were kind of gross to get off, and lint would get stuck to them. It's really weird, but oh, I felt this costume so much. Look at that tassel. What a great, great costume. I have no reason to ever wear this again, so I'm gonna have to figure something out. I have to go somewhere in this. Totally fake fur, by the way. This was our door. It was Starfleet Academy under the sea prom door. And thank you to the person two doors down that did this wonderful mirror universe door. I had to grab a picture with it. I'm sorry, I cannot remember your room number, but I also don't know your name. So if you recognize this door, shout yourself out in the comments. I loved it. Thank you so much for joining me here on Stitch Trek. I had a phenomenal time that night. It was so much fun. I loved my costume. I. I'm obsessed with the 1920s and historical costuming. So this night was like, made for me. Live long and prosper. Try not to hit my triple mic. Couple hot. And 